Hello friends, Mark Johnson here. Welcome back to another episode of the Tririga War Room where experts advise. Hello friends, I want to talk to you today about the Tririga Database Table Manager. This is actually a utility that was introduced into Tririga back in the 10.4.2, 3.4.2 version of Tririga. So it's been, what, a good probably eight years or so. And I didn't even realize it was there. I didn't know anything about it until about um, a month ago when I was at the Tririga World Conference and Ray Treppermer uh, had a session and, and he brought it up and, and talked about it. And I thought that, well, you know, hey, this is great. We, we've got an ability now that we can create indexes directly in Tririga. We don't need to go to a DBA. We don't have to have a direct database connection. Um, this could be good. And I didn't think I would probably have much of a need to use it. But uh, lo and behold, I did run into a situation where I needed to use it. And so I want to go ahead and, and demo for you how to use the Tririga Database Table Manager. Now, here's the release notes for the 10.4.2, 3.4.2 version. Right, so as you can see, it says an administrator, you can view, alter, drop, create a database table indexes, right? But apparently it's, <clears throat> the requirement is more than being just an administrator. You have to have access to the admin console, at least as far as been reported to me in, uh, in 10.7.3.7. Now, I'm going to be demoing this table manager uh, with just the... Uh, you know, the system user that I'm logging into because I'm logging into an out-of-the-box version of Tririga. I don't have any users created. Matter of fact, this is an 11.5.4.5, so this is the new release that I'm logging into. Uh, there's no data, so no no leases, no buildings, no fiscal line items, uh, nothing, nothing like that. But uh, so if you have trouble accessing this uh, particular tool then make sure that you have access into the admin console. Um, it was reported by uh, Bryn that in the uh, 11.141, uh, it seemed to be fixed where that wasn't a requirement anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get logged in. I'm, again, I'm logging in as a system user, so I'm not going to have any problem utilizing this database table manager because the system user obviously has admin console access as well. All right, so the scenario that I ended up having to use this database table manager is we, a client that I'm, mine that I'm working on, their, uh, some of their financial reports when they're doing the month end close are, are timing out and causing problems for the, the end users. So I was asked if I could, you know, take a look at the BERT report, see what I can do. I got the sequel for the BERT report and it was it was a mess. Right? It was obviously um, constructed by somebody who was taking Tririga queries, exporting the sequel and piecing things together. Not really built by someone who has a deep understanding of the, the Tririga database. So I'm trying to and explain a little bit on the, on the database too uh, so that you have a, a better understanding of, of what it is, what I did. So. Uh, the SQL for this particular BERT report had about 2,000 lines of code in it, and uh, what it was doing was primarily you had a the real estate uh, the real estate lease or the real estate contract BO was being joined with about 20 different sub queries, and most of the sub queries were fiscal line items. So the the fiscal line items have a, an association and a smart section um, to to the contract. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at that uh, just so I can kind of explain it as I go along. So the fiscal line items are under the tri cost item module and I'll go to fiscal line item. So you can see here on the fiscal line item there are two smart sections. So the smart section for contract as you can see it goes to the contract link BO. Now the contract link BO is implied in this name is a linked object. It's not a standalone business object, right? Asset lease, real estate contract, tri contract, those are all standalone business objects. A linked business object is something that we don't really create and utilize um, much uh, nowadays, but uh, they existed um, way back in the system. And the purpose of the linked object is that it's a pass-through object. 
So it can actually represent any of the business objects that are in that module. So as you can see, it's got the association string of is fiscal four. And if we come down here, we can see that the same association string is used for asset lease, used for tri contract, uh, and that's also used for the tri real estate contract. So I'm guessing that the person that created the SQL didn't think they had use of a smart section. Now, the advantage of a smart section is that it has a what's called a reference, right? And that reference really is the spec ID of the associated record. It's stored in the fiscal line item table. So you don't have to go out and look it up. That's why in Workflow Builder, right, things are kind of listed in the order of the R as far as performance, right? Use the reference, use an association, use any associated object, right? That kind of uh, hierarchy of order. Well, in this case, for all of the fiscal line items, there is a smart section. This is fiscal four, which so the tri fiscal line item has a column in the table that contains the spec ID. Well, in the SQL and all these different subjoints, they were going out and joining to the IBS spec assignment table. The IBS spec assignment table is a ginormous table. It's one of the largest tables in the database usually. Now, things have gotten a lot better with module level associations, but unfortunately for my client, they're utilizing SQL Server, and so that doesn't support the module level associations, or I should say vice versa, module level associations doesn't support SQL Server. So they're still having just this monolithic IBS spec assignment table. And so I took the initial SQL and I executed directly against the database and it took about uh, 47, 48 minutes to return about 54,000 records. So quite a while. And that's with, you know, the IBS spec assignment table. It has lots of indexes on it. So it's already optimized about as well as it possibly can be. So I went through each of the different um, joins and anything that was joining where there was a smart section, I utilized the smart section and the reference rather than joining the IBS spec assignment table and then just join directly um, to the lease. So I'm going to pop uh, over here to the, the SQL developer and I've got the fry fiscal line item up here and, and you can see this. So in the database table, so the T table is the table that represents the business object. So if you're just looking for a fiscal line item, you'll see there's an L underscore table too. That's the language table. That's, that's what holds the translations. But if you come to the T table, now I've already sorted this based off of the column name just to make it easier to see. But you can see these, there's a couple of sys key columns, right? So the sys key columns in the Tririga database correspond to your smart sections, right? This is where the reference is. So for a fiscal line item, it has a smart section to the real estate contract or or asset lease, right, using the is fiscal four. So that smart section, its reference is this is fiscal four sys key. So this column right here holds the value that we want. We don't need to go out and look it up. So <clears throat> I went through this SQL um, and, and basically rewrote it because it was very inefficient, right? Because you had the, the join against a real estate contract, about 20 subqueries, then a union, and then the uh, asset lease, and then those same 20 subqueries uh, again. That's part of why it was some, you know, 2,000 lines long. There was even like four of the subqueries that weren't used. None of the display columns uh, were, or joins, or anything were utilizing those particular subqueries. So I also got rid of those in the process. So as I optimize each individual subquery, and I tested out the subquery, and I measured the performance, each individual subquery was performing a lot better and faster than the original query, or the original subquery, rather. So I went through, and I, I optimized all the SQL, and I, I got my joins in, and then I, I uh, put the SQL all together, uncommented everything, and I went to execute it, and my optimized SQL actually took 75 minutes instead of 47. So it was about 50% longer. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense. If each individual piece is faster, how is this, the total much longer? So I, I got to thinking about it and I realized that, okay, the fiscal line item is being joined to the leases. So that means when we have a, a, a spec ID of a lease, whether it's an asset lease or real estate lease, the database takes that and then it looks for this is fiscal for syskey column that matches up 
right, with that spec ID. Well, I went and I looked at the indexes on the fiscal, the fiscal line item because I wanted to see, is there an index on that particular column? Well, it turns out that there was not uh, an index on that particular column. There are only three indexes on the fiscal line item uh, object. So as you can see right here, right, it's the spec ID is, is one index, the GUI ID is another index, and then the object ID is another index. Right? So nothing for the syskey uh, columns, which are your, your smart sections. So I was like, you know what? I need to add an index here because I need to put an index on the S fiscal for syskey. Hey, I just learned about the Tririga database table manager. I can create the index directly in Tririga. I don't have to create it uh, manually with SQL, get the DBA involved and everything else. And this would allow me the opportunity that I could play with it, right? I can add additional columns or whatnot and see how I can squeeze the best performance out of my updated SQL. So make a long story short, I created the index and I'm going to walk you through the process. I'm going to actually create the same exact index in this environment as I did for the, the customer. And it sped this report up instead of taking the 75 minutes, 47 seconds. So the overall improvement from the original unoptimized SQL, which was about 47, 48 minutes, to the optimized SQL with the index of 47 seconds. So um, very, very noticeable improvement. So obviously we were running into full table scans when it was trying to join the lease spec ID to the uh, is fiscal for Siski spec ID of the lease. And so by having that index, the system was much more efficient, much faster, and, and could do that join. So from what I've seen, it doesn't really look like the smart sections uh, are getting indexes in, in Tririga, at least not by default. And, and maybe that's something that they will, will do uh, in the future. Because I, I was asked to, to write this up and, and send the information so that the, uh, the performance team can actually take a look at it. All right. So the Tririga database table manager. Where is it? How do we access it? How so again, you have to have admin level access, older versions, admin console access as well. But you're not actually going into the admin console. You're not making changes from the admin console. You're doing it directly in the, the Tririga UI. So to get to the Tririga database table manager, you want to go to tools and then system setup. Right? Under system setup, under the system menu, you're going to see the database table manager. It's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. The, the, the thing you see here is there's just one record, right? This database table manager. You're going to go ahead and uh, click that, open up, that up. Now, the first thing that you have to do once you open this up is you're going to need to synchronize the database table manager. And what this is going to do is it's going to go out and interrogate the database. It has to identify, okay, what are all the tables that are in my schema? What are all the indexes on those tables? So that it can list them out. Because we're going to have the ability to view indexes, we're going to have the ability to drop indexes, alter an index, or create a new index. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this to start the synchronization process. It's going. Now, I'm just using a little VM. It's probably going to take several minutes for this process to complete and get in sync inside my VM. In an actual environment, in the customer environment in which I did this, it only took about 30 seconds or so. So it shouldn't take too long. If it takes more than, say, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so, then you know, maybe something's gone wrong and you might want to look into it a little bit. But um, just for the, the sake of brevity and not to keeping you all here while we sit and wait for the synchronization to happen, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then I will resume it and we'll see you shortly. Alrighty, welcome back. Our database has uh, synced with the database table manager. So now under select table, if I click on the picker here, I should see a list of tables. And as it opens up, I can. And so we are going to be looking for the tri fiscal line item table. And as you see, there are two tables. Again, the L table is the language translation table. That is not the table we're interested in. This T table, which is corresponds to the BO, is the one we're interested in. So I've gone ahead, I've selected the uh, the table, 
and now because it's on view indexes by default it's pulling up the indexes and we can see the three indexes that exist on the table are, are the same ones that we saw here directly against the database in the uh, SQL developer. So what we need to do is we need to add another uh, index to this table. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to create indexes. All right. And so now that I'm on create indexes, we can see that the, the form is updated. I'm going to click on enter details for the new index. And so the first thing I need to do is I need to give this index a name. So I'm going to start off with IDX just to kind of be consistent with how these ones are here. And then I'll do underscore. And then I'm going to say instead of sys, I'm going to do CST just to indicate that, the, hey, this is a custom index. It wasn't, uh, it didn't ship with the product. And then I'll do T underscore uh, try Fisca just to, all right, so that's how both of the other ones started off, and then they start to go with, well, what's what's the column, which in this case is, is fiscal for, and then it's the syskey, but the other columns, they didn't, they don't have the, the full name of the, the field, well, I guess maybe they do, if you try fiscal GUI ID and then object ID one, um, so I guess I'll do syskey, all right. It's not a unique index, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the radio button and I am going to click on add indexed columns. So the index columns, this, this is the columns in the database that we're putting the index on. So I'm going to click here and so what we're looking for is the is fiscal for sys key column, right, because again that's the smart section, that's the, the one that has the, the reference for us. So I'll click on column name and I'm going to select is fiscal for syskey. And I'm going to set the sequence to be one and I'll click OK. Now, the actual index that I created, I actually added a second column, which I'll go ahead and do here. And the column that I added was for the, the GUI name of the, uh, the fiscal line item because in the particular SQL that I was optimizing and every one of those subjoins was filtering based off of that name. So since there is no type of index that has that, I went ahead and, and added it. So I'm going to do that here too. And I want to select the try form name SY field. So it's going to be uh, in alphabetical order. There we go, try form name SY, and my column sequence here is going to be two. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna inspect my index. Got two columns, column sequence one, column sequence two, and it's sorting them based in, in order, and either one is, is descending order. It's not unique, and so everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and create the index. So now you can see that I've clicked on create index. My index exists here, right? So I have cre successfully created an index in the database from Tririga. I didn't have to get a DBA involved. I was able to do it myself. Now, granted, not anybody can do this, right? You have to be an admin user. You have to have access to the admin console in the older versions, at least. And you can, you can do that. Now, be careful. Don't just go in and start creating indexes willy-nilly, right? Because indexes always have a cost, right? They can speed things up greatly, but they can also slow things down, especially if you have too many indexes on a table, right? Because every time you insert into that table or delete from that table, those indexes have to be rebuilt and updated, right? The new information has to be put in or the old information has to be uh, pulled out of it, right? So you still want to know what you're doing and have an understanding of indexes and when it makes sense to, to do one. But this gives you great flexibility because you can you, you can experiment, right? You can add columns, you can change the order of the columns on the index and see if it makes a difference for what you're doing. 
in my particular case, once I added this specific index for the SQL that I had, which was, again was pure custom SQL, this was not an out-of-the-box report, it had a dramatic impact on performance, right? 48 minutes to 47 seconds, right? So, uh, huge. So, needless to say, I've been tasked to, to look at the other uh, BERT reports and, and optimize them, too. So this is the Tririga Database Table Manager. Again, it's been in Tririga since the 10.42.3.42 uh, version of the product. You may not have a lot of opportunity or chances to use it, but uh, it, it absolutely works. It's worked great for me. And, uh, you know, just to, you know, be, be careful. Just, uh, you know, the, the common sense stuff when it comes to uh, creating indexes. So uh, thank you for your time and for watching this video, and I hope to talk to you all again soon. All right, friends, that wraps up another episode of the Trirega War Room. Thank you for watching this episode. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, you know, please do like and subscribe to the channel. You know, your subscriptions are the only way that I have to know if you find these uh, videos helpful and if I should continue to, to make them or not. I do these videos on my own time. I'm not currently compensated in any way for them. So if they're not helpful, I'd much rather go and, and, and work on some of my other side projects. So you know, here at the Tririga War Room, we really do want to be your expert advisors and help you to better implement and use Tririga. So uh, if you have any ideas for future videos or even if you would like to you know, guest instruct a future video, please do let me know. Again, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time.